What's up guys, this is Andrew, your computer science teacher for today and I am very excited because in this video we are going to learn together one of the most important algorithms that every programmer should know, which is the binary search. We will see together how the binary search works, what problem it was designed to solve and then we are going to write some code together on the whiteboard. So without further ado, let's get into it. As the name suggests, binary search is a searching algorithm, so it was designed for quickly searching for a specific element in some collection. In the most basic case, we are going to search for an integer value in an array, but that array should be sorted, either increasingly or decreasingly, for us to be able to perform the algorithm. Let's take a look at some example. Here we have an array full of integers, could be negative or positive, doesn't really matter, and we have a target value. We are supposed to find the position where this target value lies. So in our example for 17, we will return 4, or if the target value doesn't exist in the array, we should return minus 1. Obviously, we always have a brute force approach, which is to iterate through each element of our array and compare it to our target value. All right? If at some position that element is equal to our target value, just return the position and exit the function. If not, at the end of the array, if we didn't find the target value, just return minus 1. So we will have a brute force approach, which is going to be performed in linear time, which means big O of M. Now, I want you to notice that this brute force approach is going to work well, no matter how the array looks, all right? So if the array, let's say, had totally random values, the brute force approach is still valid. But in our example, you can see that our array is increasingly sorted. And here the binary search comes into play. Now it's time to see how this beautiful algorithm works. And initially, we are going to search for this target value in the whole array. So my range of positions in which I look for the target is going to be from the first position. Here, I'm going to have my left pointer all the way to the last position, right? To the end of the array. Here is going to be my right pointer. And at each step, Binary search compares the middle element, in this case, the middle element of the array is going to be at position 6. It compares this middle element with the target value, and if they are not equal, it figures out in which half the target value could possibly lie. When we are looking for the target value in the range from position left to position right, our middle element is going to be at position left plus right divided by 2 and obviously because this formula could not be an integer I am going to take the integer part of it right so this is going to be the middle position and for our example let's take a look initially left equals 1 right equals 12 let's see the mid so at step 1 mid is going to be equal to 1 plus 12 13 divided by 2 6.5 the integer part is 6 so the middle element is at position 6. Now, the middle element is 21. How is 21 compared to 17? Well, 21 is going to be greater than 17. Well, first of all, they are not equal. And because the middle element is greater than my target value, all the elements on his right are going to be greater than the target value too. So the right half is useless. I am going to look for my target value only on the left half. So the right pointer is now going to be at position 5, right? So what I'm basically doing here is right becomes middle minus 1. Great, it's time for step 2. Let's compute the middle position, which is going to be 1 plus 5, 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So middle position is going to be equal to 3. The value of the middle element is going to be 13, which is less than 17. So what conclusion do we take? Well, they are not equal. And because 13 is less than my target value, all the elements on his left are going to be less than the target value too. So now the left half becomes useless. So I'm going to search my target value only on the right half which means that left is going to be equal now with mid plus 1. So my left pointer from here is now going to be at position 4. This is the left pointer. Time for step 3. Well, the middle position is going to be 
4 plus 5, 9 divided by 2, 4.5, which integer part is going to be equal to 4. Now, I'm going to take a look at position 4, and the element has value 17, which is now equal to the target value, right? So 17 is equal to 17. That means that we are going to exit the algorithm and return position 4. So after only three comparisons, we found our desired position. Now, let's clean the whiteboard and take an example where the target value doesn't exist in the array and see how the algorithm works. We are going to search now the element 31, which doesn't exist. And again, I'm going to have the whole array. So left pointer is initially 1, right pointer is initially the length of the array. And for the step 1, we are taking the middle position, which is 6. So here is the middle position, and we see that we have value 21. Now, 21 is obviously less than 31. So what do we know? We know that we should search our value in the right half. So I'm taking the left pointer from here, and I am just going with the left equals middle plus 1. Then left is still less than right, so I have more steps to perform. The middle position is going to be 7 plus 12, 19 divided by 2, 9.5, the integer part is going to be 9. So middle position is 9. 50 is greater than 31. And because of that, we are going to look now only on the left half, right? So right is going to be equal to middle minus 1, which means right is going to be at position 8. Left is still less than right, so there's room for step number 3. Middle is going to be equal to 7 plus 8, 15, divided by 2, 7.5, so middle is 7. Take a look at position 7, which is 29. 29 is less than 31. That means I'm going to look on the right half, so left is going to be equal to middle plus 1, but middle is 7, right? So middle was here too. Left is now middle plus 1, so left is going to be equal to right, both of them at position 8. Now, when the left and the right pointers are equal, there's one more step to be done. And that is to compare actually the value at that pointer with our target value. And now, we can see that 43 is not equal to 31. Which means, the binary search is over, our value doesn't exist in the array. So we just return minus 1. All right, guys, we have seen how the algorithm works. It's now time to analyze the time complexity. And for that, I want you to think what happens after each step. Initially, we are looking for our target value in all the array. So we have a big problem of n elements, right? We are searching our target value through a set of n elements. After the first step, which is only a comparison, so it's constant time, we are left with one of the halves, right? So after only one step, my problem is now of dimension n divided by two elements, right? After that, I am taking that half, applying one more step, right? So computing the middle element, doing one comparison, and I remain with another half. So after one more step, the size of my problem is now n divided by 4 and so on and so on. Best case scenario, I find my target value and exit the algorithm. Worst case scenario, each step I divide my problem by two until I am left with a problem of one element. So the number of steps I perform is the answer to a simple mathematical question. If I take a number n, how many times can I divide it by two until I remain with number one? And this is obviously log of n. So our time complexity for the binary search is going to be big O of log n. And for the memory complexity, obviously we don't use extra arrays or something like that. So our memory complexity is just big O of n from our array. All right, guys, this was the binary search. I really hope that you understood the algorithm and enjoyed it. And I can't wait to see you on the next video where we are going to write the code for it. Bye.